Let's receive right now our fresh daily bread from our Heavenly Father. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless you and magnify you for your word. We magnify your word, Father, because you magnify your word above even your name. And Father, right now, I thank you. We thank you. We believe we receive right now, each one of us, for our fresh daily manna from heaven. I thank you, Father, that you put your thoughts into my mind, your words into my mouth. And Father, that this word goes into our ears, into our hearts, and it nourishes us and brings us faith in Jesus' name. Now let's acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my nation. And Jesus is Lord over the nations of the earth in Jesus' name. And Jesus is Lord in our government. And Father, we just thank you right now that you are raising up godly men and women to rule in every office throughout our land. Men and women that will hear, that do hear your voice. And Father, that you call them to be leaders because the word says, when the righteous are in rule, the people rejoice. And you said to pray that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. So, Father, we believe that you raise up godly leaders that are honest and good and that will lead us and bring us back to the truth of your word. Father, you're a mighty God, and we just thank you for doing that in Jesus' name. And now let's receive the word of God in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that you opened my ears to hear as the learned, that you've given me ears to hear. Blessed are my ears, for they hear, and my eyes, for they see. And Father, I thank you that this word has free course in my mind and in my heart, and it produces a hundredfold. So the parable of the sower, the Holy Spirit, has been opening this up to us, and we're so grateful for it. Father, we thank you. And he wants us to know and understand. You know, um, so many times Christians say, well, you just never know what God's going to do. Or you just never know the will of God. But the word says uh, to be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So it's up to us to go to the Lord to find out his will. He is gracious to give it to us. But we have to ask for it. And we, he, the, Jesus says, search the scriptures. And the word says in Corinthians that the Holy Spirit was sent to show us the good things that he has freely given to us. So the parable of the sower is the way that we receive every promise from God. In uh, Mark chapter 4, he says, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. So this is the mystery. And he says the sower sows the word. The word of God is what the sower sows. You and I are the sower of our hearts. The heart, our heart is the soil. It's been purchased by God. We are bought with a price. So we have a new heart, new soil, and then you are the one, you are the farmer. So you choose the harvest that you desire. Well, first of all, we um, till the soil. You know, that's what he said to Adam. He put him in the garden to till the soil. So we till the soil. We make sure it's good soil. And then we decide what harvest we want in life. And then, and we let the Holy Spirit guide us in the word on that. He that will love life and see good days. Yes, that's me. I love life and I see good days. We see in Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Thoughts of peace, thoughts of peace and prosperity. Those are God's, God's thoughts toward you. So you can choose that. It's our choice. And so, in um, Mark chapter 4, verse 
8, he says, And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And I was going to read you that out of the Amplified, but I don't think I brought it with me. In Matthew 13, 23, But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. And then in Luke 8, 15, But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. So they, the word is the seed, the incorruptible seed of the word of God. And so the farmer chooses the harvest, but now he has to get the seed, just a regular farmer. So what does he do? Let's just go through the steps. A regular farmer, he gets some soil, he buys some land, Step number two, he tills the land. He gets the stones out. He gets the weeds out. He gets the thorns out. He tills the land. He plows it. And then uh, step number three, he decides what harvest he wants. Step number four, now he has to go get the seed. Well, where are we going to get the seed for our crop? to sow into our heart out of the Word of God. The Word of God is a book full of seed, imperishable seed. So let me just give you two or three, and you know, we're going to go into this in detail later on, but just to give you an understanding of what the seed is, you can take 1 Peter 2.24 who his own self bear my sins in his own body on the tree, that I, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed, or I was healed. You put it in the first person, and you take that seed, and you put it in your mouth, and it goes into your heart. But the, you choose the seed, so that is the seed. That is a seed for healing. Or Psalms 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who hath forgiven all of our iniquities, who hath healed each one of all my diseases. That is an incorruptible seed. That is the seed of the word of God. King David gave us a lot of seed. How about this one? The Lord is my shepherd. I do not want. And then he says, only goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. That is an incorruptible seed of the Word of God. Um, another one is Philippians 4.19. You're all very familiar with this. But my God shall liberally supply, fill to the full, my every need, desire, and want according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And 2 Corinthians 8.9. For I know the grace of my Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for my sake he became poor, and I, through his poverty, have been made rich. And about your harvest, I've given, and it is given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Do, does God cause people to give unto me? We never look to man. We always look to the promise. We always mix faith with what God promised us, never looking to man for our help. So that is an example of the seed of the word. And I wanted to read you what a writer wrote that sheds a lot, he, sh he sheds a lot of light onto this parable. This is F.F. F. Bosworth, and um, he wrote Christ the Healer, Christ the Healer, but he gives a lot of light. He had some revelation on this, and so we're going to partake of his revelation. God brings about, well, he calls this God's garden. And he says, you are God's garden. 
every moral being on earth has been bought with a price to be the Lord's garden in which his imperishable seed is to grow, to be cultivated, and to produce its wonders. You are God's garden. He says real Christians, real Christians. So this is telling you what really Christianity is all about. Real Christians are God's farm, his husbandry, his field, his garden. A field belongs to its owner. And he said, um, we belong to him by right of creation and by right of redemption. We are bought with an infinite price to be his field. Paul said in Corinthians, I did the planting in the parable of the sower. Jesus said the seed is the word. It is the imperishable seed. God brings about his wonderful harvest in the same way a farmer does. Jesus said, he sent forth a sower to sow. And listen to this. This is so good. It is God's word that lets us know what to trust him for. Faith cometh by hearing, by our knowing what God's will is for us. Because they can accomplish such wonders, God wants all of his seed planted he wants all of his imperishable seed planted in your heart and in my heart because you have to sow and plant in your heart i have to sow and plant in my heart but it is god's will that every one of us plant all of the seed and reap all of the harvest that he has given us seed for god wants all his seed planted God's purpose in creating seed was that it might be planted in good ground where it could germinate and grow and bring forth fruit. So Paul said, I did the planting. Seed is powerless until it is planted. And then he said, In the seed, there are infinite possibilities. This is why it should be said of everyone as it was at the beginning. They gladly received the word. And you know, when Jesus ministered, the multitudes came out. And they came out for one reason. And that was to hear the word. It says they came to hear and to be healed. But they knew that they had to hear it in order to be healed. In the plainest Bible text, there is a world of blessing. Just as in a little seed, there is a potential tree a million times bigger than the seed. That's good, isn't it? So you just think about one seed and how big a tree grows from that one seed. Only the imperishable seed can bring about imperishable results. The Bible says, every seed bringeth forth after its kind. Each promise by the blessing promised reveals the nature of the harvest of promises fulfilled. That just gives us even more insight, and it just makes sense. You know, a watermelon seed has the DNA in it to produce watermelon. Corn seed have the DNA in it to produce corn. The Word of God that says, nay, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us, has the DNA in it for us to be more than conquerors. Or what about this? I am born of God and I have overcome Satan because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That has the DNA in it 
that has, all of God's word has God's DNA in it for it to produce exactly what it says. So now that we know where the seed is, and now that we have the seed, then what's the next step? This is so simple. So what does a farmer do after he gets his seed? And a good farmer is going to get the very, very best seed. He's going to plant it. You know, seed is not good in just being seed. You can have a Bible. You can take your Bible to church. You can say, I love my Bible. But the Bible is a book of seed. And that seed must be planted in order for it to produce. You know, that's the difference in religion and Christianity. Religion focuses on going to church, taking your Bible, doing this, doing that. No, God focuses on your heart. And for you to be producing the seed that is in the Word of God, that is God's will for you. In Hebrews 4, he says that the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. And he said they all heard it. And he's talking about the children of Israel, the multitudes that came out of Egypt, that God, with his mighty stretched out hand, brought him out of Egypt. God, he, God with his mighty outstretched arm, brought you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Well, he brought them out, and they came up to the promised land, and it was his will for every one of them to go in. How do we know that? Because that's what he said. They had his word. They all heard that word, but only two of them mixed faith with that word, allowed that word to go into their heart, and only two of them out of that generation went into the promised land. And so he tells us in Hebrews 4, the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. He says, therefore, he said, let us fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. So you can have the seed. Let's take a natural farmer. He's got his field. He knows what his harvest is. He's gotten his seed. But he's decided, you know, I've got some other things to do. And so the seed is sitting in the barn. The seed is not going to produce until it is planted in the soil. And you know, he may say, well, that's okay because I believe I have a harvest. And that's what we call foolishness. You would think a farmer was foolish if he said, if you came by and he said, well, I'm just waiting on my harvest of cotton to come in. Well, have you planted any seed? Well, no, the seed's in the barn. But you know, I'm just going to wait on my harvest to come in of cotton. You would think, that is ridiculous. Well, let's bring that over into the Christian realm since we're learning about this, then it's just that important that we plant the incorruptible seed of the Word of God. No seed will produce on its own. It must be planted into the soil before it will produce. The seed of the Word, the incorruptible seed of the Word of God must be planted in your heart in order for that seed to germinate and grow and produce what it says. Now, it will produce. It will produce up to a hundred times greater than what you, that one seed that you sow in. But it has to be planted. It has to be sown into the heart in order for it to produce a crop. So just likening that to a natural farmer, 
must go out and sow his seed, then you as the farmer of your heart must take the word of God and plant it in your heart. And I think this is where uh, the Lord is enlightening our eyes to see this because many times Christians are trying to have faith but they haven't had planted the seed in their heart or they're trying to get a harvest of um, health but they haven't planted the seed of health in their heart and so it's up to us to decide the harvest to pick out the seed and the Holy Spirit is sent to help us in all of this you're not doing this any of this on your own the Holy Spirit and you just call on him Lord you are my helper in this the Holy Spirit is my helper father I thank you that you are helping me right now to um, choose the seed to guide me into truth to give me the promises and you are even helping me to plant the seed into my heart. So, any farmer that wants a crop of anything knows he must plant the seed. And we will look at this some more tomorrow. And we will learn also how to plant the seed into our heart. But know that it grows the kingdom grows from within you and it grows by planting that seed in your heart and allowing that to spring and grow up and produce of itself what the DNA is in that seed. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God for this word and that we have quick understanding of all things in Jesus' name.